everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. With a spot in the Super Bowl on the line, everything is on the line in today's conference championship matchup. It's the Browns going up against the Steelers. So let's get you up to the Steel City. Standing by in Pittsburgh, here are Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Straight ahead, it's a clash to decide the AFC's representative in the Super Bowl. And it'll be a great one between the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hello, everyone. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The postseason continuing here on EA Sports. And, man, it is electric in here, and it should be conference championship time. I don't know about you, but my butterflies in my stomach, they have iron wings in this one. <laughs> and every... the scoreboard 0-0 as the offense gets ready to take over the football. They go play action here on first down. It's hauled in by Devin Smith. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. So he got three of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Personal foul, face mask, defense. And I know it's hard in live action, but you've got to keep your hands away from the face. That's a 15-yard penalty. You work on it all the time, making sure your target area is lower and trying to keep your hands away from the face mask so you don't get the big penalty. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Now it appears we have a Steeler here slow to get up. We'll check on his status when we get back. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Here's a give to Crowell. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. Okay, no score on that play. But this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Isaiah Crowell, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Browns have taken the early lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. you into the start of this next possession the score seven nothing and now cleveland geared up to take the field and they will simply charles be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six and they hope it'll be that easy right to be able to 
take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. And another thing that makes a comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. On second down, here's Crowell. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Now a play fake here on first down. He was looking for Devin Smith that time, and that'll bring up second down. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost. And now there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Now you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. He'll look to throw. And this is caught on the sideline. But no, they'll say out of bounds. He caught it, but was not in bounds. Incomplete. Charles, that's an important third down stop. You don't want to spot him two touchdowns here early. You're trying to slow momentum down. You've already given up the score. They're coming right back at you. You're exactly right. Being able to hold them there and force a decision on fourth down, that's big for the defense. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Snickers. You're off your game when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a... drop you into the start of this next possession. The score, 7-0. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, try to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run, and at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. A first down carry now for Crowell, and he'll get this one up. To about the 39 here. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Now that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. He'll look to throw. He's going to look deep down the field. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. 
And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. They'll run the option left. It's a foot race. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. It's their quarterback, 61 yards. And the Browns add on to their lead. Well, plays like that make the O coordinator look like a genius, but I don't think he saw that play going that well. No, I don't think so either. But, boy, it all worked out perfectly. They caught them in the right defense. Guys dropping off into coverage, their eyes averted somewhere else. And guess what? He filled the void with his legs. You into the start of this next possession. The score, 7-0. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game. Ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. So how about that one, Charles? We haven't seen that in a while, the illegal forward pass. The quarterbacks get so much leeway on this play that you're right, Brandon. It is very rare that we see the call come out for a legal forward pass. After the penalty, it's Crowell. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Two plays in a row, the defense won, stacking up the running game. They've got to feel good about themselves, but something has to be in the back of their minds. Are we being set up for something big? They've got to be careful. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's caught inside the 35. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Josh Gordon, 74 yards. And the Browns add six to their lead. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. And that's almost like one of your turkey... to play in the second quarter. The offense gets ready to take over. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Dancing to his left. And his throw here is incomplete. The intended target was Corey Coleman. And that'll bring up second down. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick but able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football. That's why he was able to bat it away. And he will make his way back to where he started from, and that's all, as we will make our way to the two-minute warning. Defense has set themselves up nicely, third and ten now. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. Flushed out right. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Well, we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. That's complete. It's Gordon. And he's brought down. 11 yards on the pickup, and that'll be good for a Cleveland first. Well, we saw the practice film this week. They wanted to focus on these intermediate passing plays, and it paid off there. And they took that focus not just to the practice field, but in the film room to show the guys exactly what they wanted 
what types of looks they should expect to get, and how they would beat those coverages each and every time, and it paid off on that play. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And a hook up over the middle to Pryor. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. Holding offense. And that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know what you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. Over the middle to Smith. And he'll go down at the 28. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And it'll be third down. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's... Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. And now the offense operates in the red zone. They'll look to throw now on first down. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. A missed opportunity for an interception would have... Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. On play action, they'll throw. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be one he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. And the 13-year man puts it through. So we are halfway home to figuring out who will represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Steelers trail right now, but with another half to play, there's time to turn it around. The Browns came in prepared for this game, and it shows in the way they played. All right, let's roll those moving pictures. Third down from inside the 20. Run play coming up here. He'll take it in for the touchdown. That takes the lead up to seven. End of the first quarter. Smith's got the catch here, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 33-yard line. Browns would go on to kick a field goal. Third down at the 39. Impressive blocking frees up the ball carrier, and he'll end up sprinting into the end zone. Lead grows to 17. Third down from the 25. Gordon's going to corral the deep ball, and he'll go in for the touchdown. Browns push the lead to 17. Third down from the 25. He's going to scramble away and take off, and that connection will lead to a gain of 29 yards. So that's all for... This offense ready to get back out there as they'll have the football to start the third quarter. Second half begins with a run by Crowell. He takes this for three to the 29. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. They'll run it again with Crowell. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. They'll run it now out of the gun. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And there's a run to be happy with. 
good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. Eluding the... And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Dayton Jones in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll be fourth down. The Browns send out their punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And that's blocked. The Steelers get it. Now this will be the big man. Get the oxygen tank ready. And he's in for six and a Steeler touchdown. Gardner, as you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. So the football will be at the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. They begin with a run by Crowell, and he stopped immediately there. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Trey Burton, the one he was looking for, and it's third down. And he still doesn't have a catch. We're into the second half. I think it's a little bit of a surprise to me, but that was one he should have caught. Absolutely. That was his best opportunity right there. He dropped it. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. So the run gets him the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Give them a lot of credit. They ended up running the ball on a key third down situation. They were staring three and out in the face and found a way to flip the script and keep the ball moving on offense. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an error in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. The Browns send out their punter now. On for his second punt, and remember, his first one was blocked. On third and one, I think everyone in the stadium thought they'd try and run the football there, but they tried to surprise the defense and hit something through the air. Instead, it results in an incompletion. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Steelers are going. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be from 56 yards out. And that is no good. He gave it a good run. That wasn't more. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And supreme confidence in the kicker turns to supreme failure, as that is obviously no good. And this score will stay right. field as they'll take over here in the final minute of this third quarter. And a strange one here, a little befuddled. They're sending out the field goal unit now. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And last time out, they... Football will be at 
the 25 yard line as this offense gets set to take over. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. Fourth down, no problem. It's a good piece of power running right here and a confident decision to go for it. And that's going to get him a first and goal. So the offense has it, six-yard line, first and goal. And he goes backwards on this one, losing yardage to the seven. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. They come out here in the eye. Second and goal from the seventh, and they'll run it here. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Now from back at the nine after that last play, this is third and goal. On third and goal, Roethlisberger. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. That will bring up fourth down and an 11 yard loss to Boone. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Right hash, 37 yard attempts. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll bring him back within four. So an interesting call there to take the three. I guess they're thinking their hands were tied, but in the fourth quarter, that field goal, it really might not help them much at all. Yeah, I mean, you still need a touchdown. Another field goal does you no good, so it'll be interesting to see what the media reaction is if the score stays where it is. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. And in this situation with a lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. He'll drop to throw. And he can't find the receiver, and he's brought down. Looks like a nine-yard loss. And it also brings up fourth. The Browns send out their punter now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. With it is Brown. Nearly a huge return, as it is still a very good one. 24 yards. And the offense... offense will take over and they will have the football at their own 20 yard line and now Cleveland geared up to take the field and on the last go around they really couldn't get anything going they had to punt from deep inside their own territory which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule what they're looking for now is a little more consistency move the ball at least a few times on offense get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old-school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football, because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion, and both sides... yard line as this offense gets set to take over and now Cleveland geared up to take the field and the last go around for them they tried that really really long field goal couldn't connect 
And in retrospect, I think a lot of people would say, well, why would you try one that long? You hurt yourself in field position. The ball comes out, you know, there. That only helps the other team. But I look at it as maybe it was a double shot of confidence. Confident the kicker could make it. And even if he missed, confident in their defense that they could hold him. Back to throw. He's going to let it fly. This is caught inside the 15. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Devin Smith in the final minute. And the Browns have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. So many practices that we watched over time where the offense works on scoring late in the game and finding a way to win, as we just saw there. Just saw it right there. Now can they preserve that advantage that they just... you into the start of this next possession the score seven nothing and here are the Browns now as the offense comes back out onto the field they have the lead obviously late in the game I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake and the Steelers signal for another timeout that'll be their second so one more chance to stop the clock here and we'll be back again it's Crowell and he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Now hang on here. Timeout called. Timeout called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll try and punch it in with Crowley. Touchdown of the afternoon, and the Browns add on to their lead. And that touchdown should make you feel comfortable, but do you really feel like it's totally over yet? Not totally, but I think you're pretty much there. Yeah, you've still got it. This was the goal before they started the season, to play in a Super Bowl, and that's exactly what they're going to do. And this is why songs are written about teams. Okay, you go back, some teams wrote them earlier in the season about their goal of getting to the Super Bowl. This one, they're going to be able to break it out now because their goal was to get there, and they achieved it. How about that? That's pretty fantastic. And that'll close the books on the conference championship. For Charles Davis, myself, Brandon Gordon, and our entire crew, we'll talk to you in two weeks from the Super Bowl.